Das Wort hat jetzt für die Fraktion. And now on behalf of the Liberals and Democrats, Ms. Infeld. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Tusk, Mr. Juncker, there seems to be a recurring theme in all the interventions, and that is the, by now, total inability of the Council to take any kind of decision. But I'll come back to that. First, on CETA. The Alder Group wants CETA to be salvaged, and if more time is needed, uh, then more time is needed. It's not the date, but the result that matters. However, we cannot unpick the work that has been done, because trade is essential for our prosperity. And the credibility of the European Union, it has been said by others, has been severely damaged. And the winners of this episode are not the Walloon farmers or the Walloon entrepreneurs. The winners are China and Russia and other countries, because they will get to set the standards and not Europe. Now, some parties in this House are actually welcoming the veto by Wallonia because they are against CETA. But that is a very dangerous kind of opportunism. Welcoming a veto when it suits your purpose will boomerang because tomorrow a veto will be used against your priorities. But the CETA episode expo exposes a much bigger problem. As I said, the weakness of the Council. Now, colleagues, Mr. Tusk, the EU cannot continue like this. If we look at the list of topics on the table, sanctions against Russia blocked, the Ukraine agreement jeopardized, CETA blocked, refugee relocation blown out of the water, decision on Article 50, the EU has been kept dangling for nine months, and now one of the countries is threatening to veto the budget. We cannot continue like this. The EU is like a three-engine plane with one engine completely broken down. Now, it's still flying as the other two engines are still working, but it cannot stay on course until the council engine is fixed. Mr. Tusk, please ensure that the European Union will not undergo the same fate as Poland in the 18th century, as the Polish parliament was completely pa paralyzed by the so-called liberum veto allowing every single nobleman in the parliament to block a decision. And as a result, Poland did not become greater, but it became irrelevant. And the council has to take responsibility for the European Union as a whole, and it has to do so soon. Because not only will our own citizens tire of the inability of the EU to respond to the big challenges of today, but Europe is rapidly making itself irrelevant as a global actor. And that has an impact. It has already been mentioned. The victim of the same inability to take decisions are the people in Syria. If the EU fails to decide on sanctions against Mr. Putin, we lose any leverage we may have to force him to stop the bombing. We need a political transition urgently, and that means that we have to be able to put pressure on Mr. Putin. But victims are equally the refugees. And I'm actually a bit surprised to hear the, the, the Council, but also the Commission, to be quite jubilant about jubilant about the successful refugee policies when the United Nations just yesterday said that 2016 is the deadliest year so far. More people have drowned in the Mediterranean than any year before. How can you say this is a success? Exactly. How is it that the Council can still look itself in the, eye, in, in the eyes, in, in the mirror, and say this is a success? So, Mr. Tusk, the Council the member state leaders have a duty to end the paralysis, a duty towards the EU citizens and a duty towards the world. Thank you. For the United Left now, we'll hear from Mr. Silikiotis. Thank you, Chair. As the GUE group, uh, we believe, and our conviction is, for peace and against all wars. It is right to condemn the attacks and bombings 